Hi there, welcome to my Let's Play of the game Journey. Journey was released on March 13th, 2012 for the PlayStation 3 and is an adventure indie game based on the setting that you are in a desert and you have to reach a mountain. The game focuses on building an emotional connection with the player and is very different from most games that were released on the PS3 at the time. And the reason I'm making a video on this is because by the time you're seeing this, the game has already hit its 10th anniversary. 10 years of this game and this community still hasn't died and I'm really thankful for this game, especially for the, all the memories that it's brought to me. And if you don't already know what this game is, welcome. By the time I reach chapter 3, I suggest clicking off the video or maybe saving the rest for when you complete the game already. And also, sorry if I stutter at all. This is post-commentary since I can't really record my microphone while I'm playing on the PS5. And in case you're wondering, this is the PS4 port of the game, but it just ported it over to PS5 because PS5 is PS4 game compatible. But anyways, let's go ahead and start. And here we are. This is our player, if you couldn't already tell, but, uh, yeah, the player looks a little weird, but it's just the art style of this game. The game gives basic controls, but, like, moving the controller around allows you to look around, but you can also use the right stick, and you can le use the left stick for movement. Not the D-pad, though. I don't know why. And you'll see here on the top left corner, it says, Online Play Disabled. Uh, that's because this game is actually online but you get to play through the entire journey with another player if you choose to follow them. I decided to play alone just for this, since I don't really like to follow other players. Especially not while I'm trying to record. So, I just disabled the internet on the PS5. And here we are. So you might be able to see that in the distance, uh, that little structure over there with a beacon indicating something. That is actually going to be a major part of the game. It introduces a new mechanic and you'll see it reoccur several times throughout the game as secrets and also just generally as things to help you along the way. But in case you don't know, this game you can't even die in. It's mainly just focus. It's not focused on difficulty at all. It's more focused on the story. But I don't think there's like any hidden lore, like really deep lore. Like it's not FNAF. <laughs> I, I can tell you that much. It tells the story as it goes along the way. But yeah. You'll be able to see our scarf extended, and if we go towards these things, it lights up, meaning we have energy. So we can hold circle to also get these cloth creatures, as we'll call them, uh, near me. And that'll also boost the uh, the cloth energy. This, this is used as, throughout the entire game. And you might be able to see a few more here. And a nice little structure to the right of us. But anyways, we can slide down here, and here we are. We're at the chapter select. Oh. Yeah. Um, this usually would give you access to every single chapter once you've beaten the game already, but of course we're going to play every single chapter one by one, and in order. 
But you also are able to see a symbol right there, similar to the one we just collected earlier. So I collect this one just because we saw it, but I try not to spoil all the secrets in case you want to actually collect them for yourself. But part two, I will actually show pretty much every trophy that you can get in the game. There we go, we spawned a bunch of cloth creatures. I'm not sure what this specific uh, type is called, or at least, and I don't even know what the developers intended to call them, but uh, me and a few others call them cloth creatures just because, well, they're, they're creatures made out of cloth. Yeah, I got another symbol. And now this shrine right here is actually is something that reoccurs in the game a, a lot too. So this is a cutscene, which of course I will shut up for just for now, just so you can focus on it. And the gate opens, so we're uh, so we're given access to the rest of the game, and we can actually start now. But you'll be able to see something in the distance if you look really closely, right where the light at the end of the bridge is, or the crossway, whatever it is. That's actually it symbolizes you know, that actually symbolizes another player, but it's not really very relevant. It just indicates, I guess, it's a little hint that this game is online. But here we are. So we're in the first chapter, and I like to call this actually the prologue, since the first chapter you can actually select on its own, but this one you have to go through the whole cutscene to actually access. Yeah, that's basically the reason I call it the prologue. The, the next chapter I consider chapter one, so if you were confused about like the whole chapter three thing, that that's just uh, that's just how I can call them. But yeah, once once we reach chapter 3 and you've not already played the game, I suggest clicking off the video and playing it for yourself. But of course, I can understand if you can't really buy the game at the moment, or maybe you don't have the time. But regardless, uh, you can watch this. Uh, I'm not here to judge. But yeah, you can see there we activated something and we built a bridge there. Now that's pretty much the goal of this uh, prologue chapter. We have to build a bridge to the end, and then we can make it through the rest of the game. But something, if you actually notice right in front of us by now, you can see it right there. There's the mountain we have to reach that you might have been able to notice in the beginning cutscene. Now, you can actually see that mountain quite a lot throughout this game, and uh, barely are ever not able to see it. Besides chapters like chapter 3 and chapter 4, I think. But yeah, it's, it's just a reminder as to where you're going. And it might seem very far, but this game is actually really short. It's an hour long, and you might have been able to tell by the video length, but it's a pretty short game. But of course, 
this being a short game also it is also meant to be played multiple times which makes up for the uh, for the short length of the game and you might be able to see at like the bottom of my uh, player there are like yellow stripes there that actually turn white once we gain energy like here and that actually indicates how many times I've played the game so if you played the game only once and you're just starting that'll be like a few lines at the bottom of it but for me that's a very detailed bottom of the cloak Now here is another one, obviously, but I try to get up this quite a lot without even realizing, yeah, I need I need uh, energy to fly up here. Yeah, you can see I can't really reach it, so eventually I go in, uh, into the other cloth creatures. If you're ever stuck, that, that's mainly the thing you do. I mean, it is the main mechanic of the game, so... Yeah, of course, these are the last two bridges we have to build. Otherwise, this is a pretty simple chapter. It's kind of like a tutorial, uh, is what I would say if the beginning of the game wasn't already a tutorial. It's showing the symbols, mechanic, and also uh, pretty much everything else. But th this, is, this is also kind of like a tutorial. Yeah, you can see the, uh, the bridge is built, and it glows up just to indicate it. Now we just need to head over there. But also, there's some really fast movement you can do in this game that a lot of speedrunners actually use. I, I'm not personally a speedrunner myself, especially since I'm not good at the really fast stuff, like clipping out of the map or anything like that. But I am fairly fast at this game, although I tr I try to keep it casual here. But yeah, you can you can see we can fly on top of the bridge, and that the bridge gives us energy. That's generally with everything that's made out of cloth. And also, you'll be able to see it the random symbols whenever they glow up and that also is the same for our character I think. That little attention to the detail is actually pretty cool but um of course there's another cutscene here so sand clears up and we can continue on so we're about to enter chapter one but uh i also got gifted this game on steam from a friend and we played it together and i actually recorded the whole thing which will be part three of this series actually but i'm, I'm currently playing this on ps5 and yes i did get a ps5 for christmas from my parents which big thank you to them since a ps5 is really hard to get right now but I played it on the PS5 version since the audio isn't bugged out, like, uh, since the Steam version, for some reason, the audio system is bugged. 
Like some sounds would be uh, too loud, some sounds would be too quiet, some sounds would be pixelated, and it, it's not too annoying, but I feel like it would be better if I recorded on PS5, which I did with a USB flash drive. But here we are. This is chapter one, and if you're ever lost in any of the chapters, just head towards the mountain that you always see. Since, of course, that's the goal, and if you go towards there, you'll usually find the end of this chapter, or the chapter that you are on. But, of course, in some chapters, you might not be able to see it. But again, those chapters are a straightforward path. But here we can actually activate this. Now this is another form of a cloth creature that kind of re resembles either a bird or a fish. I, I think it's more of a bird, but I'm not sure. It they don't have specific names. It's all left to the player to interpret, but... This one... This one will actually guide you throughout the chapter, so if you're ever lost, just make sure you've activated that, and then this will th guide you towards other things. Of course, there are a few secrets that it won't guide you towards. One of them I actually get. But yeah, you can see this. This is another activator. Which will spawn even more of this and cloth creature. Yeah, now we have a total of five, I think. I think it's spawned four, but... Now, another thing about these bird-like creatures is that we can we can actually fly with them. Now, the, the main reason it does this is to guide you over towards this right here, which is a glyph, which is one of the uh, main secrets of the game. And this one is probably the most common to be found. Along with the symbol we'll find later on, like, a forward. But yeah, these glyphs actually show a bit more of the story as we go along the way. But the cutscenes are better at doing that. But of course, if you want to know the whole story. Once again, this isn't like FNAF lore that's really complicated and hard to learn or even figure out, but, uh, it's, it's a pretty simple story, and mainly it's supposed to show a message about life. Now here I just go forwards instead of going back to the original path that we were at, since right here, there's actually a symbol that spawns. Now this one I remember getting quite a few times, along with the glyph we just got. I'm not completely sure if I followed the cloth creature when I was younger, but I had to get the uh, secret some, uh, some way. But yeah, it spawns a bunch of cloth creatures here, which we can use to fly up here. And yeah. Once again, I don't show too many of the secrets, so... Here is the main ending of the chapter, or the goal of this one. This one you just have to get up to this tower and and then activate a cutscene, and then you'll get to the next one. But uh, here I actually get a, I have a bit of difficulty, I, I'm not sure why, but I'll see. You can see the wind wall pushing me, by the way, I should probably mention that. That serves as a border for all of the chapters, but... This one, you just have to climb up this tower, and I don't know why, but I had a bit of difficulty here. And I, I tried to get to the cloth creatures, and tried to get them to guide me, but they refused to even go near me. I, I, I don't know what it was. Like, did I do something to you, man? Like, you can see here. Just flying above me. <laughs> what did I ever do to them? But, uh... All I, all I really had to do was just climb that up there, just stairs. 
and I could have gotten there easily. And of course the flying with the cloth creatures mechanic uh, plays here. But one one of these cloth creatures is actually stuck. So we free it by, uh, of course, chirping, which is a, uh, as a few people call it. Uh, which can be done with uh, by holding circle, of course. But it's the main way of communication and also interacting with things. Now this, this specific thing in the tower is actually a pretty crucial part of the game that we'll see again in chapter 3. So keep this in mind. But... Yeah, once again, uh, spoilers once we reach chapter 3, so... If you haven't already played the game, play it. But here, another cloth creature trying to uh, guide me up here. And then all we have to do is activate this cutscene, so... I try not to talk over, over all the cutscenes just because uh, I feel like it's better just to watch them. We go. All we really have to do is once again using uh, use the flying mechanic with the cloth creature here, and then we'll make it to chapter two. I don't know why, but the cloth creature kind of just falls here. Usually, it's supposed to show that you're flying with it, but it, it, it's fine regardless. It, it leads you to chapter two either which way. It might it might have been just an error, but here we are. Now this one is actually pretty cool since it's like a, a sand surfing section with a bunch of archways that you can pass through and all you really have to do is just sand surf to the end. Now I don't know why but there is a trophy that you can get if you pass... <coughs> <coughs> Sorry I don't know what happened to my voice but uh, if you pass through 15 archways I think but for some reason on the steam uh, on the Steam like statistics and everything, apparently the least amount of players have gotten this, even though it's probably something that a lot of people with ADHD would do, like me. I don't know, it's weird. But we pass through here, and you might be able to see to like the right of our character, there was a symbol up there, but I, I, I didn't do this skip that I normally do. I just bug out there, but um, yeah, all we have to do is activate four of these. These cloth creatures, I guess uh, they're trying to guide me towards this. Yeah, they are. They might be following me, I'm not sure. And yeah, this, this game is fairly simple. Uh, but of course we haven't really gotten to like the best parts of this game quite yet, which is why I want I wanted people to watch until chapter 2 and then uh, click off by chapter 3 if they haven't already played the game. 
since uh, a blind experience for this game is really, really fun and really good. But another another tip for players who haven't played the game yet and have yet to play it offline. Don't play with other players because they can try to guide you towards things and that may or may not confuse you, but also it would spoil some of the solutions. And also playing solo allows you to figure out, uh, things out on your own without having to follow someone the entire time. Here we are again. Another uh, sand surfing section, which these are actually really cool. I'm not complaining about these at all. They're really fun to try. This one I avoid the archway because I want to go towards this one, but I think I would have made it to this one anyways. Not sure. I missed that one, but I think this larger one actually counts. It, it doesn't exactly matter since I already have all the trophies anyways, but it's, it, it's, it's just fun to do. see the cloth creatures following me as I sand surf, which I feel like is pretty nice, just to see that. But here is actually a really good uh, part of the graphics in this game, and where it demonstrates it pretty well. Now you might already be able to see it, but this little hallway over here, it pans to the view of the outside world. And it shows the evening light and it reflecting on the sand so incredibly well. It's a beautiful scene, and the sun and the sun behind the mountain too. It, it's really good. But yeah, I think it's around the evening time in game currently. But yeah, anyways, we're, we're back to the straightforward path. I thought that was just a really cool little thing. But we're, we're nearing the next chapter. All we really have to do is just get down this really quickly. It should take like five seconds. So you can see we're actually falling down here and the mountain is still left of us. Now obviously, obviously we all, what did I just do? Uh, Obviously we go towards the mountain, but here we enter an underground area, and in case you don't know, this is what I consider to be chapter 3, so if you haven't already played the game yet, this is pretty much the final warning I have. Uh, play the game for yourself, play it blind, and it'll be a better experience. But if you're still here, then... the gate opens. Yeah, that's a really common theme with these chapters, but if, if you excuse me, I'm gonna get some water in, but obviously I'm gonna cut it out, but I, after that mishap earlier, I need some water. Alright, I'm back with my water, and we're in chapter 3. Uh, the reason I want to go get it is because I actually choked earlier when I heard it, like, not like physically. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure, but I stuttered uh, really badly. But if you hear sipping, that, that's why I'll be drinking the water as we go on. But this this small little uh, patch of light is the first thing you see in this chapter, and it's actually pretty cool. 
the the ruins actually uh, leaks a bit of light into it from the outside world and right now or right about now I think it's nighttime in game and of course you saw the cloth creature there are a few cloth creatures down here but uh, I do say a few I, I'm, I'm not sure if like there's actually like less than usually would be in the game but this isn't exactly an area where most cloth creatures would want to be at this current state of time. And you'll see why, but this, but the reason why is because it is why I wanted people to play this game before they got to this in the video. I actually try to get a secret symbol here, which I find kind of funny, but then I realize, oh yeah, I don't, I don't even have Scarf Energy, and I can't really get any at this moment. So, whatever. Now this part I actually kind of like. This this one actually tries to follow the theme of an underwater level a little bit. And it does it pretty well. You can see the resemblance with the, the cloth creatures, or the cloth as the kelp on the ground, and, and the lighting really fitting it. And if that doesn't convince you, then this will, because this pretty much just has jellyfish as cloth creatures. So, it is trying to portray the theme of underwater. But this is mostly supposed to be an underground level, it's not actually an underwater level. But there is a kind of underwater level in this game. But yeah, right about here is the reason I wanted people to play the game first. This is a major spoiler to the game, and it has something to do with this ruined little thing with the green uh, coming out of their eyes or whatever. But yeah, also, uh, this small little cutscene is a little loud, so it might turn down your volume slightly. It's not like a jump scare, but... That's the thing we've been seeing the most throughout these chapters, if you were able to notice like the ruined uh, little stone things. Now these things are the reason why cloth creatures wouldn't really want to be down here, including our own player, or well, just anything generally made out of cloth. This actually has a lot to do with the story, and if you pay attention to, the, uh, to these cutscenes, or like the cutscenes that were before, and the cutscenes you'll see later, then you'll understand what this is. But right here, it actually shows you why cloth creatures don't want to be down here. At least, not at this current time. Yeah. If those things, and I call them war machines because other people also do, uh, if those things see anything made out of cloth like our character, it'll try to fly towards it and rip the cloth. But if you, if you want to avoid these things, it, uh, it's not like a really a difficult stealth game like FNAF Security Breach or something like that, but all you really have to do is hug the left wall or the right wall. And you might have been able to see earlier that we actually got a secret, a glyph, by hugging the left wall. So that's pretty cool. But Yeah, that's pretty much all we have to do. And also, the thing that you're trying to avoid here is the light that comes from their eyes. Uh, I'll see if it shows up. Yeah, right there. You'll be able to see, after, like, in front of the creature, there's a blue light coming from their eyes. Their eye. Uh, but yeah, all we have to do is avoid that light and hug the left wall. And head towards the next area whenever we need to. It's not too difficult. But of course, it can be stressful, and actually it was pretty stressful for my friend who played the game for the first time with me on Steam. And also, that same friend also gifted me the the game on Steam, so thank you to them, but we're not at that part of the, the series yet.
But yeah, this is actually episode one out of, I have no idea, because I may or may not do like a hundred videos on this game. I may or may not do four. I may or may not do three. I'm not completely sure. I just want to enjoy this game as much as I can and show others it as well. But part of this, uh, the purpose of part one is to show the main gameplay of the, the game when you play through the entire thing, while also celebrating its 10th anniversary. Yeah, once again, there was a war machine that tried to find us, but we we're hugging, hugging the left wall. But also, you'll be able to see right around here, right there, there's a symbol that we can get if we hug the left wall. So that's why I suggest hugging the left wall. Uh, but of course, I hope I didn't spoil those. It's not too much of a big deal, but... Now this this part is actually a really cool cutscene, uh, semi cutscene because it's actually movement and everything like that. But we sand surf down here, and you mo it might be able to see the war machine spot us. Now they can't actually kill us, but it's really cool and really intense. But of course, if we reach this, we're protected. It's honestly really cool, and I kind of wish that when I was playing the game with my friend on Steam for the first time uh, that he didn't actually miss that since we flew above the war machines entirely and they didn't see us at all. But it's really cool. gate opens. Now we're on to chapter 4 once we cross the gate, but something I find interesting that I didn't notice when I originally played the game is that those lanterns light up and play a sound. I, I don't know how I didn't notice that, but I don't know. Small little detail that I guess I missed. Here we are. Now this chapter, I don't specifically know why. I kind of know why. For like, there are a few reasons, but I remember replaying this chapter over and over again when I was younger. I don't know why, but I absolutely love this chapter. There are a few reasons why I think I love this chapter, but of course we'll get into it once we reach this glyph, which is actually not really a secret, but it's a main part of this chapter, and a mechanic as well. But yeah, you're able to see here, once we activate that glyph, the water level rises. I don't actually know if it's water, since it kind of looks like sand, so it could be like quick, quick sand or something. But I don't know, it's like water, and it gives us energy when we're inside of it, but there are a few reasons why I may or may not have liked this chapter. So the first reason is because there are a lot of players in this chapter. I don't know why, but there there were there was a good chance I could find players in this one. And chapter one was especially good for this, but this one was later on in the game, and I could complete chapter five with a player much easier. I I'm not sure if I actually cared about 
bringing players to chapter 5, but I just find I, I just really like the multiplayer in this game. The second reason could of course be the main gimmick, the water, which I don't completely know if that's true because I I, I don't remember like it being hype about the, the whole water mechanic. I, I guess I was just like, oh cool, and, and I moved on. There, there's also a third reason, which I think is the most likely reason. So you might be able to see here the goal of this whole chapter is climbing up this tower to reach a cutscene, another dwarf. I think the aesthetic of having to climb a tower is pretty cool, especially when you bring mechanics like these into it. And also you might be... This is pretty cool, but uh, there's a cloth creature in the form of a whale, which which you haven't seen before, and it's really cool, but... I Yeah, I guess I really liked the aesthetic of having to climb a tower uh, to reach the next area. Especially when you get to see the, uh, the whole view of it from the beginning. But yeah. Also, in case you didn't know, there are secret glyphs here, and also there are obviously symbols, which you can see right here. So. But, yeah, there are... I think there is actually only one secret glyph. Of course, I'm not going to spoil it, but... I am... I'm not sure uh, why else I could have liked this chapter. Uh, there... Yeah, I think the most likely reason still probably is that you have to climb a tower and to reach the end. It's really cool overall. But yeah, we're on to the, we're now on to the last little glyph we have to activate. This chapter is actually pretty short, but it's really nice and really, really cool uh, to play. Now you can see that a bridge was built and a few are forming, just so we can cross this. Uh, I don't actually think you need this, but it's really... It's just a really a nice little way of getting the player towards the next goal. But yeah, you'll be able to see the last little glyph over there. And of course, this one has uh, cloth creatures, just so we can get over there. I don't really need it, but it's a nice uh, little... Thing to make sure players aren't stuck on it. But that actually makes me think, could you beat the entire game if you didn't get uh, any symbols besides the first one that you have to get? But anyways, we're, we're on to we're on to the cutscene, which I of course will be quiet for, but this next chapter, if you thought in chapter 3 was a major chapter, wait until you see this one because it's very a very large part of the game, and it's pro probably the biggest build-up that the game has been trying to build up to so far. I don't know. But yeah, of course there's a cutscene here, so I'll, I'll shut up already.
actually think that cutscene is really well done by the developers when they made it. Because it really shows what you're about to go into. Uh, and I really like it for that. And the music blends in so well. And they do that throughout the entire game. They try to fit the music in when the scene is appropriate. But uh, before I get into this one, let, let me know if you actually are interested in this kind of content and if you're enjoying it so far. Uh, of course, uh, you don't have to you don't have to comment on it at, at all. And here we are. So now that we're into the second to final chapter, uh, I actually didn't really like this chapter too much, or at least I don't really now, but I feel like the reason should become obvious. It's not at all bad in any way, they did a really good job on this one. Uh, there's no glitches, or and there's like it's not made terribly, it's not too hard to navigate, but I, the thing I don't like about this chapter is because it's the slowest out of all of them so far, and and probably takes the longest out of the ones we've been through uh, recently. Like out of like you know the pro the prologue, like the very beginning of the game, the chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, chapter four. I feel like this one is the longest, and chapter three, you know, chapter four actually probably has to be the shortest. If not chapter two, uh, chapter two definitely. I don't even know what I just said there, but uh, yeah. Here's the first little mechanic. Uh, since this is a very a snowy biome, and, uh, when getting close to a mountain, and since we're already pretty close to mountains, uh, there's uh, obviously going to be a lot of heavy wind, which we'll see throughout the entire thing. But this is an introduction to that. And of course, if we don't get behind something, we're going to get pushed by that wind. And depending on the section, it's going to push you pretty strong. So all you really need to do here is just hide behind these. There's no real threat, like the war machines. But actually, I probably should mention, the war machines reappear in this one. So, and that that's probably another reason why I don't really like this one. But once again, not a bad chapter. It's actually really good with the story. But, yeah. All you really need to do for this section is just hide behind these. But we're not into the hard part yet. We're getting into it. But so far, it's just uh, pretty easy. And also, something, something I shouldn't mention is for like the secrets... There's actually no symbols in this chapter. Yeah. Uh, you, if, if you've been collecting every single symbol in the game by this point, you would have gotten the last symbol in chapter 4. So, there are a few more glyphs in this chapter, and uh, there's actually two more. But, that's it. you probably have the maximum amount of scarf length for symbols at this point. There's actually a cloth creature stuck here, and you might have been able to see at the very beginning of the chapter, uh, one of these cloth creatures fell into the ground and sunk into the snow. Yeah, and you, you probably already noticed, but cloth creatures, including our player, don't really do well in snow. Right here, you can see our scarf is icing up and we're starting to move a little slower. And when the wind comes in, then yeah we're not going to do very well. But of course, it's all a part of the game, and we, we don't have like a time limit or anything. We don't have, have health. The only thing we really have is we have to deal with is the war machines, which can't even kill you. But yeah, of course, the wind can be a little annoying, but just keep... Uh, just keep hiding behind whatever you can and just make it through.
Now, you might be able to see to the left of us, there, there's a little a section that we can actually hide in and warm up in. And there's actually a glyph that I feel like a lot of players could find in here. Uh, so all you have to do, uh, light up these with the chirp. And if we hold circle again, uh, there, there are actually cloth creatures above us that will help us fly. And there's a glyph over here. Now, now, I feel like a lot of players could get that, especially if they were playing multiplayer and they, and like they were players that would uh, spam circle just to communicate with each other. Uh, since people do that a, lo a lot, but yeah, that's pretty common in secret, I guess. But the next one is a little more uncommon to find, and you'll be able to see here is a cloth bridge. That we have to cross that's kind of icy from the, uh, from the whole environment. Still, it still works. Now this part actually, I believe this is where we run into the war machines. Now uh, I feel, yeah, I, I'm sorry if this feel uh, seems like cheesing it at all, but just like the last chapter, all we really need to do is hug the left wall. Now usually you're supposed to go through the straightforward path and also hide underneath things and that they can't see you through. Uh, but th this also works. It's a little more, it's a little risky because they actually check this wall a bit. Not directly, but they kind of skim you a few times. And it, it's pretty intense, but obviously you'll be able to get through it. Also, the sounds that the war machines make can actually uh, scare uh, you a bit or frighten you. But don't worry, if you're arguing the left wall, you should be fine. Of course, play this however you want. Just remember, you can't die. And of course, the wind is pushing us here, which you might not even be focused on since you're trying to focus on uh, avoiding the war machines. So most players, including the the player that I was playing or the, the friend that I was playing with on the Steam version, uh, were they were focused on the war machines and trying to avoid them, and were really stressed out about it. But the wind, of course, is a little annoying. And you can probably feel it, even if you weren't focused on it. But of course, we make it there anyways, and. If you actually hug the left wall, similarly to uh, chapter 3, you actually find another secret here. Because of it. Uh, now, on the PS5 version, when I actually replayed it earlier, uh, like a few months ago, maybe one or two, uh, it also depends on the time you're seeing this, but I think it's two months ago, but a player guided me towards here, which I didn't even know about. Or didn't act, or at least didn't remember, because I found this at some point since I got 100% as a child. But this was the last glyph I needed when playing the game originally on PS5. I originally played the game on PS4, of course. I had a PS3, but that overheated uh, after like repeated use, and I never got journey for it. But of course, no matter which version, this game is really beautiful. And also here uh, is another section of the War Machines, but once you're done with this, you don't have to worry about them again. So let's just get through this so that we're done with all the stress. And then the rest of the chapter is story-based and we can let it uh, go by. And we're actually approaching the one hour mark of the video here because, uh, yeah, this chapter is pretty long and since we, I think we started at like around 40 minutes, but yeah, this takes up like nearly half of the game, especially if you're really lost in it. But yeah, as I was saying before, so, uh, some of the war machines actually check this wall barely. Yeah, you should still be safe if you in a corner of the wall, but they kind of skim you and you really need to be careful. 
course, uh, pay attention to the light and make sure you don't go near it. And avoid it as much as you can. Yeah, right here gets really, really close. But thankfully, they don't directly check the wall. Like, they don't focus on the stone. So all we really need to do is just make it to the end. And yeah, that light can stress out a lot of people. Including my friend I played with. Man, like 10 years in this game is still stressful with, with the whole war, war machines mechanic. I stuttered way too much during that. But, um, yeah. The war machines add a feeling of intensity and also maybe for frustration as well with this game. And I think I have mentioned that this game is meant to build an emotional connection with the player. Ang uh, feelings like anger and, and stress can also come with it, with the war machines. But it all adds up to the story, which it will play out in the end, in chapter 6, which can also be called the ending, I guess. But we're nearly there, all we really have to do is make it to that, over there, that gateway. And then we're completely done with war machines. And also the AI of the war machines it follows the same pattern every single time, so you don't have to worry about that. It, it doesn't even like acknowledge you're there until it sees you. Like it doesn't go near you at all. It just follows kind of like a circle, but also a zigzag. But anyways, we're pretty much done now with the war machines. We're of course not done with the chapters, since there's actually quite a bit left to do. But for now, let's focus on this small little section. I actually really like this view, especially since uh, in a few seconds here, you should be able to see right about here. A, a few cloth creatures enter the scene, and it's a really nice little top view of this uh, small little crevice over here, leading to the rest of the chapter. I don't... well, actually, I, I, I liked it quite a lot. A lot when I originally played. The music tries to build a bit of intensity here, but this follows kind of the scene of the underwater level, uh, well, not uh, the underground level, chapter three, but frozen up, kind of referencing it a bit. But the actual underwater level, number four, uh, uh, chapter four. Yeah. I'm not even sure what specific theme uh, Chapter 4 gives, because it doesn't really give me underwater themes. Of course, it's different for everyone, but I feel like it's a different theme from underwater. Or at least feeling-wise. But yeah, we're getting really close to the one-hour mark. Uh, you probably have already hit it by now, since I'm editing this, uh, since I'm probably editing this video. And it might be a little longer than actual, but but actually, I assume I assume it's not the one-hour mark yet, since I'm currently recording the post commentary, and it says 59:33. So we should be around that, maybe longer. But I would assume shorter, since I have to edit the post commentary as well. And also, some, something I find kind of annoying, but uh, it's not too much of a big deal. But I had to re-record the post-commentary three times. This is my third time re-recording it because I stuttered and didn't speak very uh, like enthusiastically the, uh, the two times. Because I had to record those in the morning and also at night. So, uh, I'm, I'm currently recording this in the afternoon, so it should be a lot better. In fact, I can already tell from the way I'm speaking currently that it's going to be a lot better. But of course, I'm still stuttering a bit. But it should be better. And of course, here, I don't know why, but I always trip from the staircase. The wind always pushes me back. And I don't know what it is, but it always gets me. But yeah, all we have to do is run towards this bridge, and then... There's a story-heavy little 
mini cutscene where we can actually control ourselves here. Uh, but also, sorry for the splice here, but on the PS5 it actually ran out of recording at a time. Since the max limit is one hour, and I hit it right about here. So, sorry for the splice. But, we'll be continuing anyways. And, uh, I'll try to make it as smooth as possible. But here, you can see we're really, really close to the mountain. All we really need to do is walk there. Uh, supposedly, because if you saw it, you would see it's still pretty far away, and there's no way we're going to get up that thing at this rate. Especially when we're getting pushed against the wind, and we're just solid frozen like this. Like, our cloak practically turned entirely white from the snow. But that actually builds to the intensity, along with the music, which you probably have already noticed at this point. Really intense music. They, they do a really good job with the, the music and timing it well. There are a bunch of triggers that signify what music plays where. Most games use that. But yeah. But you might be able to notice in a bit, the music actually stops. Or at least it quiets down. But to be honest, I think I'm going to let this part play out just because I don't want to interrupt it and I feel like it it, it shows it for itself. It speaks for itself. This section honestly makes you feel like uh, you're really turning into the final boss here. It's really cool with how you survive and you gain so much power that you can fly up to here infinitely, or practically infinitely. You just make it up here. And I said the, that, that would be the last time we deal with the war machines, but here we technically deal with them, but they can't hurt you or kill you at all. And they can't even pass that light barrier there. But anyways, we're here. At this point, I feel like it's too late to say uh, spoilers for this game if you haven't uh, already, if you want to play the game, because this is pretty much the last chapter and it's just a dash to the finish. So uh, I actually take a little bit uh, too much time in this, but uh, th this is one of the shortest chapters. Uh, it's not long at all, you just need to make it there. And the music fits with it so well because it establishes that 
you're almost there. I, I run. It, it, this is the final stretch. But yeah, this game is honestly beautiful, and this specific chapter really shows the entire story really well and finishes it off with a bang. But of course, we're not at the end of this chapter yet, so I feel I feel like I should save the very very like the last a little bit of emotion for it uh, at the end, obviously. But also, um, once we reach the credits and everything, uh, don't go quite yet because I still have a few more things I want to say. I'm not quite sure what it is, but and you'll be able to see the clump forming kelp here again, kind of like how it did with Chapter 3. did this with Chapter 5 as well, and I actually followed the wrong path here. I don't know why, but I headed towards this wall for some reason. I, I'm thinking, yeah, huh, this is, this is the way, isn't it? No, no it isn't at all. I, I missed it. It's just this little waterfall here, and I don't know why, but the cloth creatures, or the cloth, like, unloaded for a second there. It's fine, though. Now we enter through this waterfall into a, uh, a very water-based area. This honestly has the theme of, like, a sky level. I, there's nothing else, really to interpret it as, besides like maybe underwater and snow, obviously. Yeah, along with these the jellyfish cloth creatures here. And you're supposed to you know, fly uh, across each uh, every one of them. Or use all of them, but I, I gain a lot of speed here. It's right, kind of funny. But yeah, the whale cloth creature returns and the waterfall guiding us to where we need to go. But yeah, this this honestly is a really good chapter that establishes how good and fitting the music is, if it didn't already. Like, this entire game has been trying to do that. It's also very, very beautiful with the graphics as well. But, here we are. This, this is the final sp the sprint to the finish. Here we are. All we really need to do is finish this already walking simulator and walk all the way to the end. There's nothing we can really do. We can't fly at all. We can't speed ourselves up a bit. Even a little. Just hold up on the left joystick. But here is the point where I want to thank everyone who has been watching this video. And if you're still here, I really hope I haven't completely spoiled this game for you if you haven't seen it before. But for those who have already seen this game, I I'm glad to be in the same community as you people. This is an absolutely amazing game, and I'm so glad I played it on PS4 when I was younger. Probably one of the best games I have ever played in a long time, and I'm glad it's short and sweet like this because it encourages the player to play multiple times. And I'm, and I'm really happy to celebrate this 10 year anniversary. 10 years. That game company, you made a game that is now 10 years old, and it still lives on to this day. This game is absolutely beautiful, and I don't know how else it could be described. Thank you for watching.
And so, here we are again at the title screen that we started in. And you might be able to see here that the sun is actually rising, but usually here it would show the amount of uh, companions you've been playing with, which is players. But uh, of course, it, it doesn't show any text at all since I didn't play with anyone uh, since I went offline. But yeah, uh, I still feel like this is a really good uh, part after the credits and credits because it shows shows where you started from and I feel uh, something I'm just noticing is that in the beginning I think it didn't actually show the mountain but now it shows the mountain which is actually a pretty cool touch but you can see it shows the option to start it all over again now before and before I do I just want to thank everyone uh, for watching this video and thank you so much to that game company for making this game and publishing it on PS3, later releasing it to PS4, PS5, iOS, Steam, that, uh, Epic Games, and many other platforms that could reach, uh, that could, or find an audience for this game even more. Happy 10 years and I hope you guys are doing well. That game company is actually making games to this day and has one currently that is actually fairly popular. But, as a beginning narrator of Minecraft Story Mode said, where one story ends, another one begins.